This is the first video on Jensen inequality and convex functions. It is widely used in calculus, probability, and competitive math. What we're going to do is to give the fundamentals today and we're follow by certain proofs and then applications. All right, what is a convex function? Now here we focus on one dimensional function. So for multi dimension function, there is a similar definition. To simplify the matter, we're going to name it to function of one variable. So a function f over some interval is convex if for f x1, x2 as marked here in that interval and every t here, there's a value between 0 and 1. So what we have is the function value of this expression here. This is nothing but that position would be the function value here, f. The f value is always less or equal to, if you make the connection between x1, y1, x2, y2, and this y value would be the here, you know, the t, y1, plus 1 minus t, y2, right? So that, that's the value here. Basically, so we're saying that the function value is going to be less than the average of that value on the second line, right? So what is a concave function? That is, if the elective of a function is convex, then the function itself is concave. So well-known convex function, uh, exponential here, right? This y equal e to the x, or x squared, right? And of course, the logarithm, however, on the other hand, is concave function. Again, this is convex, and log x is concave. All right, so there's one important characteristic of a convex function. We can derive it probably in the next video. That is, if you give a point, then the tangent line is going to lie under the curve. That is, the tangent line is a local underestimator of the function values. So if you have Taylor expression on that point for the function, then the linear term is underestimated. Right. In this diagram here, the tangent line is under the function curve. That is, for at any point on the curve, the tangent line represents a linear approximation, right? First order approximation of the function value. Now here, the first order approximation, which is straight line, is under the curve. That is, it underestimates the true value of the function in the neighborhood of the tangent points, right? As you move the points at different positions, this remains to be true. So y equal x squared is a convex function. All right. Back to Jensen's inequality. As we notice that this inequality, it is used in the definition of the convex function here. And of course, there is an extended property that is, if you have n points, and if you have coefficient t1 and tn here, that will be long negative number that add up to 1, that is, we're going to have weighted average on those n points here, then the function value at that weighted average points is going to be less or equal to the weighted average with the same coefficient of the original function values. Okay, So this, in general, is called Jensen's inequality. When you learn probability, you may see a different form of similar idea, that is, if you have a random variable x, and if the function f is convex, then the function value of the expected value of random variable x is going to be less or equal to the expected value of the function value of the random variables, you know, f, fx. Okay? So this you can encounter this in probability study. Sometimes people define the condition for a convex function to be what is called a midpoint convexity. So here, instead of choosing t or here theta here, we're going to choose it to 0 0.5. That happens to be in the middle of the x1, x2. 
And then in that case, the equation becomes x1 plus x2 over 2, so the midpoint, becomes less or equal to the average of the function value. I have two points here, right? And that's going to be the midpoint on this line segment. What we're saying is that at the midpoint of the x position, the function value is below the line. Let's move the dots, right? Let's move the dots. And you notice that uh, the midpoint, the y value, is always under the midpoint on the line segment. All right, so that's convex function here, right? If you move to the other side, the same thing here, right? So that is what Jensen's inequality specifies, all right? All right, so we can prove that this definition is equivalent to the a general form where you have um, a different value for theta. Uh, earlier we used t, but sometimes you can say theta and one theta of the inequality. And of course, there's a general form of the probability. Like how do you prove uh, from the midpoint convex to the general form of theta, right? So, and of course, there are many other interesting problems and the proofs related to the Jensen's inequality. We can have a series of videos, so please subscribe to the channel for the upcoming videos. Thank you.